So last week we went over two parts of these factors that we have to consider when we train, right? So this week we're gonna go over two more of the major factors and these two are probably more important than the first two when you look at how training should be laid out. So let's check it out and let's see what we got. The next big thing is specificity, and we've talked about law of specificity before, but we're kind of changing the factors. In specificity, it means that if you want to get better at lifting, you got to lift weights. So if you're a runner, you need to run. If you're a football player, you need to play football. How much of this obviously is kind of up in the air and depends on your weaknesses, which a lot of people don't understand. But we can also be too specific, which was that accommodation thing we just talked about. So in this, specificity is massively important and we're gonna to get to that in some of the manuals and some of the Patreon type stuff, but specificity must be used in order for our bodies to know what we need from it, but we can use it too much and therefore we can overtrain it. Probably the most complex thing that we have to deal with in all of these different factors is individualization, right? So looking at this key point, winning squats 870 pounds, I'm gonna use the exact same training setup and system that he uses. That would be an incorrect thought process. The reason being is, well, one, are you six foot one? Two, do you have all the years of the technique and the straight bar um, particular experience that I have in training? No, the answer is no. So the trick is, is that although you could use some of the same ideas using the exact training template that I would design or say Maddox would design for an 800 pound bench will not work for you because you're not me or him. But the point of it is, is that the individualization is what makes coaching an art. It's what makes coaching very, very complex is because we don't have a direct point A to point B to get better. We have all these different variables that make us who we are and what we are. Certain amounts of stressors, right? I was actually told by uh, Charles Poliquin three, four years ago before he passed away that they almost have two different types of lifters. You have high dopamine and high serotonin. And what that means is that a high dopamine lifter, although their potential most times can be higher than high serotonin, a high dopamine lifter needs variation beyond belief. And the reason is, although they have a high stimulation to training, they burn out very easily. High serotonin lifters is what most coaches like a, um, I'm trying to remember some of the, the special, uh, like Smoloff programs, right? From the old Soviet systems, it was the same thing traditional squat, traditional deadlift, traditional bench all the time. Now that makes it very easy to coach if you don't burn out with specific lifts constantly. But we all know that that probably may not be a great way to get stronger, not only based on the fact that psychological burnout is very high, but also that specific mileage at the body becomes very, very taxing. Meaning if you squat with a straight bar and straight weight constantly all the time, you're gonna have particular pressures on your knees, your back, your shoulders, et cetera versus if you're mixing and matching different stimuluses, the mileage would stay lower. So small off programs and things like that that utilize the exact same lifts all the time tend to be more easily used for bigger lifts for high serotonin lifters and west side systems, conjugate systems, things like what we use would be better off for high dopamine lifters that get burned out very easy but have high incidences of power. So I hope that helped you guys out a little bit in developing these different types of training protocols and understanding that although we can follow a similar system, we need to have individualization as the key point. And that's why we developed online coaching for you guys to teach you guys not only that we can use a similar system but have to change it. Also to make sure you're reading about different types of systems. I'm not saying that my system is exactly perfect for you, but maybe somebody else's system isn't exactly perfect for you. I think for all of us, it's a long journey of learning how to train. It's a long journey of trying to understand how we tick and how we move and how we can adjust ourselves to these particular stimuluses. Because at the end of the day, if we all use the exact same training protocols, some of us will shine and some of us will fail. So we have to know what's good for us and that's what makes this very fun, but also very complicated. Delts, rhomboids, lower trap, a great posture exercise. This is a central nervous system deload. So we're actually gonna deload the brain and the spinal cord and we're gonna overwork the muscle tissue. 